artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. Today we are doing a Parisian-inspired springtime rainy day painting where we have a someone has lost their red umbrella. Very cute Parisian-inspired painting. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. Please hit subscribe for new tutorials every Saturday. Uh, if you don't know what materials you need, check out the description box below and it shows you a list of, or it'll uh, bring you to my website, which will show you a list of all of the different colors that I use for my classes, for the Paint Along with Sky Saturday classes. But for today's painting, all we need is black and white, red and yellow. And I'm also going to just be using my three standard brushes that I also recommend on that list, uh, which is going to be a square flat brush, this medium sized brush, and a tiny brush. Go ahead and take your brushes and make sure they're in your water cup. I put mine off the screen so it doesn't shake my table setting here. <laughs> but you'll need a water cup uh, as well as some paper towels. Okay, let's get started. This is going to be a fun one. Okay, let's start with actually our baby brushes and before we start filling in all of the different areas we're going to create uh, a horizon line which is often the first line that i do in my paintings it gives me a sort of sense of place so i'm going to do this with gray so i'm using black and white and i'm going to try to keep as much of my white clean as possible so i'll kind of be coming at it from different sides here um, but I also might need more white since we're using so much in the painting today. So go ahead and take your tiny brush and you're going to want to go um, pretty much dead center and then a little bit to uh, one side, the left here on my side. And this is going to be our horizon line of our street and sidewalks. They're gonna come up, so it's like we're looking at a hill and some little shops and a park going up a hill and on the other side of the hill is the Eiffel Tower and the rest of Paris. This is not necessarily a place, this is my imagination. <laughs> okay, and then let's continue on. And this side is gonna be our park, so I'm gonna do like a little bit of a wiggly line on this side. That's gonna be dirt and later trees. This side I'm just going to let be blank for now because that's where I'm going to put some buildings. And if you do want to go off the side, it's not going to hurt anything because um, we're going to fill it in later and this is all kind of like sketch lines. But just for the sake of it all looking nice and neat, I'm not going to bring my line all the way over. So I started with that straight line and then I went curvy over here. And now this part is really important because you really want to get the diagonal of these lines correct in order to get the right perspective. Um, so what you're going to want to do is again create a diagonal line from one side of that line that you started with coming off the canvas. Okay, And then we're going to do one more line coming over here towards our park. And this is going to be the sidewalk next to our park. And we don't want it to be completely parallel. We actually want it to come outwards a little bit. So if it helps, so you can put a dot here. And then, like, I think I'm going to go, like, right to here. And then connect the dots. Okay. And then I'm going to do the sort of mirror counterpart for the street over here. So it's very much like sketching, so very, very light-handed with my brush. <clears throat> that looks good. And then a sidewalk on the other side of the street as well. This sidewalk is a little bit smaller, but that's not super important, I don't think. So again, you can kind of visualize where you're going to put your line. And put a little dot. You do want it to come up here so that it's wide enough. Coming off the canvas. There we go. That's like one of the more trickier parts of the painting. So good job so far, everybody. <laughs> 
Uh, if you are painting along and you do end up with a masterpiece, or even just something that you don't even know if you're proud of, <laughs> uh, we all want to see it. I want you to post it in the art club, uh, which is a Facebook group that I created as an art share supportive community for artists of all levels. Um, so post your works in the art club. There's a link to join that in the description box below as well. Okay, <laughs> you can get support. Uh, but don't worry, this is, we're getting all of our different shapes out first, and then it's going to be pretty easy to just kind of fill it all in. This is one of the more intermediate ones too, though, I will admit. Okay, let's do some buildings. So I've left that area blank, and now I've created the base, the bottom line here of my sidewalk. And I'm going to come up here and create my first little line, and then this is actually going to be coming like a diagonal upwards. And you're gonna create one building like so. See, I started to go too straight and then I realized, oh no, I need to have that same kind of diagonal. But the other direction, like that. So when I fill that in, it'll be a little bit more diagonal. Yeah, you don't want the straight line necessarily. Yeah, got to get that perspective correct. Okay. Looking good. Let's go ahead and retire the baby brush for now. And we're going to fill in our sky with our large brush. Okay, so big old brush, gonna start in this upper left hand corner. I'm going to use a very light gray, so I'm just gonna use this gray that I was using to sketch out all my shapes and just lighten it up a little bit, with a little bit more white. You could certainly do a blue sky if you'd like instead. And then I'm going to move my hand back and forth and bring it all the way down to the top parts of these buildings. And then I'm going to move my way over to the other side of the canvas using white and just not cleaning my brush. So very, very, very faint color, just very, very, very light like it just rained. And even though you're using white on white, you still want to put that paint on there. Don't just leave an empty blank canvas. It won't look consistent in the end. And I'm not worried about trying to keep these sketch lines clean or anything like that. It's all going to layer up. And we're going to have chances to make everything clean later. Looking good. Let's use our medium brush now. I'm going to do these two sidewalks with just a slightly darker gray. Pretty much this whole first half of the painting is black and white. I'm just going to go in the shape of the sidewalk. A little bit of water helps that paint go nice and smooth. This is a great painting for beginners because even though there's a lot going on, you learn a lot and black and white are simple to work with for beginners. Don't have to worry about color mixing with this painting. Okay, just getting that filled in with sort of medium pencil gray. Getting all of our base colors filled in. Okay, and then the same thing for the sidewalk on the other side. 
same gray color. You do want to bring it all the way up to your sketch line and cover that sketch line if it's a different color gray so that you don't see it anymore. Somewhat straight line. And then this middle part, same idea, but I rinse my brush out and I'm going to use a lighter gray and instead of going up and down and sort of along the shape here, I'm actually going to go back and forth because this is the street uh, and it's a little bit further like down and in my imagination there's like water on it and it's sort of pooled on the street and there's a little water puddled on the sidewalks too but the brush strokes going back and forth is gonna give us a really like watery effect. So let's go horizontal in here. And I am gonna cover my sketch line, but I am gonna hit this top horizon line with black later too. So again, sort of straight line, but lots of chances. So if you've tuned into any of my other classes, you've probably heard me say this before, but the direction that the brush strokes go is very important, but you can sort of go into the shape and fill it in however you need to, and then come back and then go over it so that all the brush strokes look consistent. That consistent brush stroke pattern is everything in painting. It's all about the details. And then we're going to start to move to a darker gray. And again, I can bring my brush along the sides to fill it in, but then I'll need to come back and get them all going the same direction. And then just one shade darker off of the edge here. And you don't want to go so dark to where it's the same as your sidewalk. I lightened it up by just adding a little bit more paint right onto the canvas. Not all the mixing needs to be done on the palette. Okay, filling in the colors. And then again, getting the brush strokes to go all in the same direction. Okay, there we go. Okay, looking good. This part is really simple. So let's just grab a lighter color and fill that in with some texture as well. Bringing it just right next to the sidewalk. Pretty much just getting it filled in so that it's not blank canvas again, but very much on the light side. Okay, and then our buildings. Let's grab our baby brush again, really quick. We're gonna address this building really quick uh, with some windows before we fill in the base colors because the windows are actually gonna be a lighter color than the rest of this front building. Uh, so again, like sketch color, it's almost like you're using a pencil. This part is a little bit tricky, but what you wanna do is think of it all on like parallel lines 
that sort of fan out. So I've sort of like gridded this out in my mind. And so there's going to be two windows. So we'll start with this one in the back. And this one has going to have a parallel line to the top curve. I'm going to go a little bit darker so you guys can see. And then you're going to come down a little bit. And then it's going to come up as well. And then a similar one right next door, but this guy's going to be a little bit bigger. And this bottom curve isn't quite, or bottom line here, not curve, straight line. It's still a little bit diagonal, but not quite as much as the top one. And then you're going to kind of mirror that on the bottom. So this one's going to be a little bit diagonal this way. parallel to the line, and then parallel to the ground. Go ahead and create a second window as well. Great. Excellent. Okay. And then you can use your medium brush or your baby brush for this step. But let's fill in that back building with a dark gray. We're going to add more stuff on that one later. But for now, this is just the base colors. Again, keeping the brush strokes. In this case, they're going up and down. I can use my brush to fill in the shape. And I want to come back over and keep all those brush strokes consistent. Okay. Rinsing my brush, grabbing a medium gray again. Medium gray sort of on the light side. And you're going to fill in this building, but not the windows. And it's totally okay to be kind of messy with these buildings. We are not going for photorealism here, folks. Believe it or not. Okay. And then we are going to fill in the windows with like off white, like mostly pretty much just totally white. And I think I'll use my tiny brush for the windows. I'm just going to leave the sketch line. It's totally okay if you see it still a little bit. But you do want to get some white in there. Very nice. Okay, now this should still be a little bit wet, this back building here. So while we have our baby brush and white, let's create what sort of looks like a roof by doing a couple little lines like this. And then this is maybe like a railing. I don't know. Building stuff. This is very sketch, very sketchy. And with dark color as well. So we just did it with white. With the dark color, I'm going to sort of outline it again. And then just also add more sketchiness. I'm 
I'm going to do the same kind of thing on the front building. So I'm adding highlights and shadows. He says, similar to all my other paintings, base color, highlights and shadows. So I'm sort of outlining that building. It's a little bit too light. Darker black. And then we can add a roof over here. And just a couple of lines to sort of age the building. These are not the focal point of the painting. It's kind of just a suggestion of some old French buildings. And then in the windows, a medium gray. I'm just gonna create a little plus sign there. Being mindful again of those angles. The angles are everything in this painting. Okay, here we go. And now my sidewalk is looking kind of dorky over here, so I really want to address it with some shadows as well. Kind of, again, just outlining the shape. And then I'm going to add a few streaks of black throughout as well. It's not black, dark gray. Like so. Okay, that looks good for now. We are gonna do a little bit more on the sidewalk later. That annoys me, let's see, boop. Quick little mend. Let's do some trees. I'm gonna use my baby brush. Tiny, tiny brush. Medium gray again. We're gonna use a few different grays, so it doesn't really matter which color you start with. Any old gray. And we're gonna start in what will be the sort of background of our little forested park area with some thinner trees. And then right where the tree hits the ground, you're gonna create a little shadow. You do want them to be pretty tubular, pretty even. And then you can grab a little bit of a lighter color and throw that in there as well. Break up that gray color. And then it's just a shade darker. Same idea, but a few trees in what would be the foreground. And it's fine if your trees overlap. They will kind of peekaboo out from behind and create the illusion of a dense forest. Okay, and then the same idea, a little bit of a shadow right underneath. And 
and then also just a few little brush strokes to kind of look like the dirt. Okay, looking good. <clears throat> okay, I rinsed my brush so that I could come at this area with a little bit of a darker gray. This is again that almost black color. And I'm just going to create a clean line of separation between the park area and the sidewalk. And then also where the sidewalk meets the road, same as the other side. Mm -hmm. And then same idea as we did over here, a couple streaks of a dark gray. Nice. And I went a little bit too dark right in the middle, so you can always cover it, blend it back. All right, let's add some color. I'm gonna use my medium brush and I'm going to do the tops of these trees, exciting part. Believe it or not, there's just kind of a few little steps left. Um, we have all of our different areas and we've done quite a bit. Um, so we're more than halfway through. So good job everyone that's painted along so far. Okay, you're gonna mix up a nice medium pink, nice and vibrant. And then on the tops of these trees, you're just gonna use that same back and forth texture. Topping the trees. And you want sort of triangular shape when it's all said and done. Again, all about angles. This painting is all about angles. So we're going kind of a diagonal line here and a diagonal line here. You want to bring it down the trees in a few places as well. Okay, and then a little bit of white right into the wet paint. Will help give some depth to those trees. You can even grab a little bit of red and darken some areas up too, if you want. If you want. Okay. We're gonna have one little step on those trees later that really makes everything look nice and clean. But for now, we're gonna let this dry. In this area especially, I want you to let dry completely because we're gonna put the light of our street lamp there in just a few minutes. Um, so we're gonna paint our Eiffel Tower on our umbrella in the meantime, but the final touch here, that needs to be fully dry, so don't touch that. Leave it alone, let it dry. And now, we're gonna do the Eiffel Tower. Woo, woo, woo. Exciting. Pat yourself on the back if you've made it this far. I'm going to drink some tea. Mm. Got some iced Earl Ray. Delicious. Okay. And everyone put on your thinking caps here. This is the focal point. Baby brushes. Medium, medium darkish brown. 
I'm sorry, gray. Not using brown. Okay. And the first brush stroke that I'm going to do is going to be like a half circle kind of curve. I'm going to come from the top of this building to about the middle of my street. Little arch. Okay. And then on top of that arch, I'm going to create a rectangle. So my arch was off center, so you don't see this, the end over here. So you got to imagine it, and you're centering the rectangle on that arch. And then from the bottom of the rectangle, I'm going to come off and actually have a straight line off the corner there, down into the street. And then this would go off this direction. Okay, first part built. Now we're going to come up about like an inch or two and we're going to again try to center a rectangle on top of that first rectangle we're going to go from the bottom edge here straight lines connecting the two rectangles and then parallel to that two lines like so leaving an empty space that looks good looks better than my first one <laughs> although this one so in my original I have the very top part which you can see which is like a little ball um, but this one is taller so I really like the shape though so you know it always ends up a little bit different so the ball would probably be about there so I'm going to do that but usually be a ball with like a straight line up the top but you can't see this in in mine today but you gotta just go with it that's a happy accident like Bob Ross would say and then those would go parallel in the same way creating that sort of triangle of empty space, although these are going to be very close to each other, so you might not really see the empty space, and that is okay. But that looks very cute. And I'm going to fill it in with a medium gray. Let me know what you guys think of this black and white type painting. Most of my paintings are very colorful. So let me know if you like this black and white version. Could be done totally in black and white as well. Originally I thought just do the red umbrella and have that be the only color in the painting. But this is actually like an updated version of a painting that I had i uh, been teaching for a while that has a red umbrella with like two lovers kissing underneath it. And that one's kind of challenging, so believe it or not, I decided to update it, update it with the uh, Eiffel Tower, which is less challenging than a couple kissing for sure. And just have the red umbrella. And while I was teaching classes and while my co-teacher was teaching as well she let me know and all of my students let us know that they wanted more color in the painting than just the umbrella so I added the street lamp and I made the trees a spring pink as well because I want to teach you guys what you want to learn And the Eiffel Tower is probably one of the more popular things to paint out there. I have never been to Paris myself. I very much wish to go. Okay, that looks great. So far so good. 
I filled it in with a medium gray. Now I'm going to take my baby brush with black and I'm going to go over a lot of the lines that I just did. Probably noticing a pattern here. This is kind of like a sketch, pencil-y, charcoal -y kind of painting. Outlining things with black. Let's go ahead and do the horizon line right now as well. Walk our way over to our forest. And it's okay if you have just like a little peekaboo gray still. That's okay. Doesn't need to go all the way over. outlining our Eiffel Tower shape here with the rectangles parallel you can hear the rain here it's seriously like <laughs> it's the exact same weather here I did this painting on Thursday so it's funny it was sunny then And there's uh, pink trees outside as well. But alas, it is not Paris. Okay. Same baby brush, I'm going to grab some white, clean white. We're going to go here in the rectangles and then you're going to create X's and the X's are going to be like flat so don't go along the shapes you want again it's all about angles keeping this on a horizontal axis okay and then little X's all through here as well. It's okay if it blends a little bit. Pretty simple way to paint the Eiffel Tower, I think. There we go. And then same thing up here, but they're going to be little tiny X's and they're just kind of barely even brush strokes. My first Eiffel Tower was certainly neater, <laughs> but sometimes when I teach, things get a little messy. Okay. Over here in my tree area, since I have that black, I'm just tempted to finish this area off with a kind of like a little scribbly shadows that again sort of outline things, but I'm keeping that center leaving it alone and a little bit of shadows on the trees looks very nice as well okay still cute I still like it since my first one was a bit neater <laughs> teaching talking and painting at the same time is actually like probably really good for my brain it is a challenge Okay, I'm gonna take that medium gray and I'm going to create the reflection of my Eiffel Tower. So right underneath, I want you to just do little horizontal brush strokes. You're gonna kinda work your way down and trail off. I 
very cute. Let's add a little bit more reflection all throughout the ground here. I'm gonna do little white brush strokes in my sidewalk. That's the water pooling from the rain. And then we'll do some white in our road. But obviously you won't see it in the part that is very light. So mostly down here in the darker part. And then we'll take a darker color as well. And got it kind of just here and there. Puddles on the road, little dips in the road, stuff like that. Okay, and I just see something up here. I want to darken the edge over here a little bit. Always feel free to go back. And add anything that you like it needs. Okay, let's do the umbrella now. So same baby brush. Just going to use bright, gorgeous red. And you're just going to create a sort of half circle U shape. You're gonna go whoop, whoop, whoop. Do this little swoopity marks. If you make that noise, it makes it easier. Kind of a scalloped edge. You want the sides to come to a point. Start small so that you can make it bigger as you work on the shape. Looks pretty good. Okay. I want this to be sort of as circular as possible. And then a little bit of a darker red we're going to use along the bottom. And you're just shadowing the whole bottom and then bringing brush strokes from the very center of the bottom out towards those shapes, scalloped edge. Okay, and then I'm going to rinse my brush, I'm going to be using just black, I'm going to go ahead and outline that shape that I just made. Every time I outline I always try to get the shape a little bit better. Always think of it like a second chance to make things look neater. Okay, and then I'm going to do the handle coming from the center here and then just curving.
And then make sure that you have a little bit of black in the umbrella as well. And not just that dark red. Okay, but we're gonna leave this part red so that we can add a little bit of white, but we're gonna let that dry for a second. So leave the inside of the umbrella alone for now and then right underneath you can take some red and do a little bit of a reflection on the ground and it's gonna reflect on the ground behind it as well cute and grab some dark red put that in there too colors that we're reflecting in the water are all the colors that we would use in the shape above it. Speaking of which, let's grab a little bit of pink and add it into our sidewalk below too, since that would be reflecting. And leave a little bit of empty space though for my lamp post which is going to be my final shape which we're going to go ahead and jump into right now home stretch last shape okay just pure black cute little piece to the resistance definitely an optional part of this painting too if you don't want to do this part you don't have to you might be like i am sick of straight lines and this painting is stressing me out. <laughs> or you might be following along swimmingly. Let me know in the comments or join us over in the art club. Art club got like 40 members this week, I think. Or maybe I just haven't looked for a while. But I was like, oh, like 150 people. Not too shabby, and not a bad art class, if you ask me. For any of my original subscribers watching, thank you as well. I'm almost at 100, which is really exciting, just being a couple months on here. Thank you. I have so many wonderful classes planned in the future. It's just a little rectangle that I created here, and then I'm just shadowing the bottom. And then not all the way up to my trees, but a little bit further down, I'm gonna create a floating ball. And again, I'm trying to center this ball right above this. It's kind of tricky to center things like that, but that's what painting is all about. You will get used to this, uh, get better at eyeballing things. In the center here, you're gonna just take it then to your rectangle. A little bit thicker at the base and then you're gonna come up into your trees and this part is not fully dry but still going to block out where it's gonna be so the top part here you're gonna create a U it's okay to do the black right now but when we do the yellow, you might want to let this dry for a second. But the black can usually cover. It's a little U shape like so, and then you give it a hat. Okay. Lamp post. Now that our red is somewhat dry, we can grab a little bit of the white and do some curved brush strokes along the shape of the umbrella. And then with your white as well, you're gonna to wanna to do a curved brush stroke here and a curved brush stroke there. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush and you might wanna let your painting dry. Uh, I paint so fast, so it's not dry yet, but it's gonna keep painting. <laughs> I will not slow down and we will not take a break. So the power painting, 
powered straight through all in one take. It's great. So just filling this in with light yellow and it is blending with my pink, but I'm being stubborn. I'm trying to get it in there anyway. You want that to fill, be filled in with a nice light yellow. Like so. And then I usually add a little bit of a highlight too into the white. Perfect. Cute. Okay. Not too shabby, right? What do you guys think? Did you like this painting? If you did, give it a like. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, again, if you need to know what the materials are, check the description box below. Get those materials so that you can paint along. Uh, subscribe for more great tu tu tutorials <laughs> uh, posted every Saturday morning. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, you can also get yourself a Sky Pratt original or print. Check the description box below for that as well. Hope to see you in the art club. And I think that is all for today's painting. I hope you had fun. I know I did. Until next time, stay creative. Thank you.